Mustard Knuckle. Hello everybody, Mustard Knuckle back again. Heading out today in the B29 Super Fortress. Gonna go through the gameplay here. Tips. A lot of history on the B-29, so we'll get to as much of that as we can. And just a general bombing tutorial. Tutorial tip number one, climb. Always climb. Climb to the side. Climb away from the fighters. Don't try to climb straight into them, because they're going to get you. Especially in a B-29. It is seven battle rating in arcade, which is what I like to play. Uh, you're going to have jets, you're going to have uh, big cannons, and all kinds of planes that can take you down really, really easily, which takes the fun out of it when you get shot down right away. So, let's think about how we can do this uh, and have some success bombing. Now, with a bomber, you can finish the game, potentially. Really quickly, you can finish the game. I don't remember how many bombs I have to drop on this thing, but with a small target like this, you need to use that uh, group bombing uh, where you can drop them rapidly with uh, two keystrokes instead of just hitting the spacebar a bunch of times. That way you can put a bunch of them on one spot. I dropped six, seven there. Uh, I don't know. I got the 500 pounders on here because that's a total of 20,000 pounds of uh, bombs. And actually, I did the math on the uh, TNT component in the 500 pounders versus the thousands or the two thousands and the 500 pounders actually gives you the most TNT uh, weight per bomb load so that's what I go with there we go we'll just drop a ton on that make sure we get it like I said I should remember but I don't remember how many bombs it takes hopefully that doesn't mess us up later on so you can see we're still climbing here got some energy got the emergency power going we're getting up we're at 22,000 feet if you can get above 25 at this tier it gets you in a pretty good position uh, to do pretty well so that's the goal now the B-29 this thing was designed as a successor kind of by necessity for the B-17 oh we're past that one so we'll go to the next one we're not reloaded anyway there we go now that's gonna be a problem because we're past that middle bomb point there that I just missed and that wasn't enough bombs on the first target so we got a problem now. I've already messed this up. But we're going to go get this one, and we're going to have to fly out a little bit to be able to turn around and get on target for that other one. So that's going to waste time, unfortunately. And that, that could end up being a problem. So just drop a bunch here. We might be able to turn around and get back to that one, but then i got to get to that one. So, like I said, I screwed it up already. So tip number two, don't screw it up, if possible. Uh, let's see, so the B-29, this thing, like I said, it was a successor to the B-17 Flying Fortress. The deal was, uh, in the Pacific Theater, the B-17 wasn't going to cut it. Uh, everything was farther away out there, uh, so they needed something with some range, and along with that range, they needed a little bit more firepower, bombing-wise, to be able to, uh, when they did go do bombing, they need to make a count, so it had to count, it had to carry uh, more bomb load than the B-17 did. Now you can see we're at 25,000 feet, so we're getting up here pretty good, and we're getting closer to their spawn, so it's going to be harder uh, for them to get to us. I just saw somebody through the bomb scope, here we go, who looked like they were climbing for us, but every time we get light, We'll try to climb. We're going to make our turns. I'm going to fly down here so I can get some distance on that middle target. And then we should be ready to start going after the airfield. There's that guy. All right. Well, we'll talk about that in a minute now. So what they came up with was this B-29. It's pressurized, which they hadn't done before. The B-17 was not pressurized. So now you have the problem. You can't have gunners with open windows. So all these guns are controlled by a fire computer. I think General Electric made it and they fired from stations i think there were two gunners that ran these guns maybe one for the top and one for the bottom i'm not sure but they ran them oh yeah that guy in the tempest is interested okay well okay i'm not too sure how we're going to handle that i like to try to keep the tail on them but also we got to try to finish the game here so i don't want to fly away all day let's see we got some good speed okay well not too sure. So, anyway, uh, as they developed this, 
the pressurization system, the fire uh, computers. So they had little stations. They could use those windows there to find their targets, and then they would uh, they would fire the top and the bottom turrets. The tail gunner was a regular gunner. He was in his spot there, but those turrets on the top and the bottom were electrically driven, and uh, standard 50 caliber guns on those. The big thing about this airplane, especially early on, was this engine was the uh, what the wasp or the right why well, I can't remember uh, it was a problem at the beginning it was uh, it was unreliable um, so that made it a little bit harder to use in the field it was uh, yeah right 3350 was the gun here we go found it um, lots of power and it needed an upgrade so the upgrade came with the uh, 4360 which was a radial engine 28 cylinders giant engine 4300 horsepower a piece so this thing that was max so i don't know how they ran i'm gonna put some fire down on this guy man with these guns even at a mile if you can put some fire on somebody you can deter them a little bit while you climb and if you can just get a hit on them an oil tank uh, a radiator something on a liquid cooled and then uh, you might even be able to, you know, get a pilot snipe or something. But you got to start trying to figure out your range and where these guns are firing early on. So we got speed. We're going to get our climb going again. We just finished that target. Those bombs will be down in a second. There we go. That's done. Now, which one of these fields? Oh, there's their main airfield. All right. So we'll turn over there, drop these 17, and then come back around on it. Keep climbing. Got to keep climbing. So the tips are, you gotta lay that fire out there, especially with the, seven, with the 29. Just keep shooting at those guys when they're coming close to you, because their performance is not good up here. We're almost at 30,000 feet now, bombs away. Now, the turns when you're bombing. Hard 180s. Oh boy, he's right underneath us. We're gonna make hard 180s. If we make a 180 here, that guy's gonna be back on our tail. So this actually works out pretty well. All right, so now we're gonna try to get something on him here. I'm below him. There we go. Oh, he's close. Okay, so now we're 180 to the bombing target. Let's start to see if we can get anything on him. We got him smoking a little bit, it looks like. So that's good. So maybe that's a little bit of a loss of power. Maybe some overheating. That's the beauty. You don't have to kill them. You just have to make it where they can't get to you. We're at 30,000 feet now. Bombs are back loaded. We get a climb going. We might be able to turn right over the top of him he doesn't look like he has very much energy so I'm gonna go ahead and turn and see if I can get right over the top of him I don't know if I want to do that I'm chickening out here he's a mile away so we'll keep shooting at him that looks good that looks oh, a little low so we're definitely deterring him he's hesitant He's turning to get away from the bullets, so clearly we're close. He sees them coming. He sees the tracers coming at him. And that's something you can judge on, how you're shooting. If these guys are affected by your shooting, you see them turning and doing things, that means you're basically on target. So we're pretty close. Now he's over a mile away. Okay, I'm going to try to turn now, I think. He's probably trying to get some energy to do a little zoom up here to try to get to us. So we'll turn back in, drop another load of bombs, see if we can get away with this he's gonna try to zoom up to us we're climbing too though oh boy he's just he's hanging he's prop hanging right there if we level off we might be able to have a shot at him here here we go Let's see if we can yeah he's slow come on oh how great would this be see this is what gets exciting about bombing everybody thinks you're just flying around up here but like this is oh a crit all right what do we get oh we got him so now we're free See, that's the excitement of bombing for me. I really enjoy that part of it, of just, especially if you can get the kill. And now there's nobody up here. Now we can finish the game. It's getting tight, but we can finish the game here. Now, so this thing, 4,300 horsepower a piece. So that was uh, 17,200 horsepower. Unbelievable. This airplane was the biggest airplane of World War II, but it really wasn't that big. Let's see here. Get them all out gone make our 180 
combat flaps to make a tight turn and get back going the other direction. 32,000 feet now, so we gotta hurry. So what we'll do, we make our tight turn, then we kind of extend once we get our 180 made. We'll uh, let the speed build up, accelerate away from the target so that when we turn back in with our bombs, we'll be right on it. That's the goal. We don't want to waste any time. That's the fastest way to do it. 180, come back in, and you're right on it when you reload. You can also look at your timer. Okay, so it just reloaded. Now how long do we need to wait? That's the question. And then this will be our test. We're going to turn in here and see how we did. Combat flaps, 180. We're climbing a little bit. I really want to be descending here. Get that speed up. More base damage. Looks like it's going to take four more runs to knock that thing out. Uh, so that's the engine. Um, pretty unbelievable horsepower. So you can see where the reliability was a factor, uh, initially especially, on those airplanes. And here we go. Like I said, biggest airplane in World War II, but it wasn't that big. Wingspan 140 or so, and it was about 100 feet long. It's not really tremendously big. That's basically, that's smaller than a 737 which is what everybody knows now. You guys ride on those are an Airbus uh, A320. Pretty much similar size or really smaller, to be honest. Now, the B29, there's so much to it. I'll have to do another video some other time, but it didn't end with the B29. This B29 was developed into lots of other airplanes uh, using the technology that Boeing developed while they were doing this. They did this for about four years trying to develop this airplane cost billions of dollars back in the 40s which is unbelievable I think it's uh, tens of billions of dollars they spent uh, in modern money US dollars now I want to be descending here turning back in so we'll roll it over a little past vertical using our aileron keys to try to get that energy back up oh boy this is gonna be tight Let's see if we can get these bombs in we're right on top of it. So we got our timing now. So we know what we need to do on our next round. Let's put these right in. Turn back around do it again. So this airplane turned into a the Strato Cruiser, the 337, which was used early on by like uh, Pan Am, uh, maybe a couple other airlines, pressurized, double-decker, long-range uh, airplane. And this airplane, the B-29, there was a variant of it that did an around-the-world flight, 94 hours, I read, uh, in the air, non-stop around the world. I think that was the first time unrefueled, maybe, around-the-world flight, I'm not sure, but it was definitely early. And the thing this is the most famous for is dropping the atomic bombs that ended World War II in the Pacific Theater. Uh, that was pretty much what it became the most well known for at that time. Oh man, I don't know if we're gonna make it. You get the idea though, if all this goes smoothly, had I done a little bit better early in the game, this game we would have ended this right out from under them. They would have thought they had it, would have destroyed the airfield, boom, done. Let's see if, I don't know if these bombs will even make it to the ground. Okay, one more run and that'll do it. I don't know if we're gonna have time. Currently, uh, the B-29, there's only two of them flying. For a long time, there was only one fly, and that was Fifi. Now there's Fifi and Doc. Oh, we got a sliver. Tickets. Mm. I don't think it's going to happen this time, guys. Yeah, Fifi and Doc. Doc got flying more recently. Uh, Fifi is uh, operated by the Commemorative Air Force. And Doc, I think it's just an independent group of preservation people there. Oh, boy. Ah, what a bummer. 33 tons of TNT dropped, though. I mean, that's pretty cool. Anyway, you get the idea. Climb, stay high, have a plan, and uh, really use your guns as suppressing fire as much as possible early on, and that will be a huge bonus. You can see the research that this thing earns, 4,000 plus uh, on the research side. But if you keep climbing and get up high, you get to where those fighters don't have a lot of energy or a lot of power anymore and you're already up there stable so you're like a gun platform at that point we have one kill 
two. Oh, that was probably on the field. We got some AA or something. And 33 tons of bombs for the loss. What a bummer. Ay. So close. So, I say bombing is fun. Especially if you have a good run like that. It's fun. Try it out. Make sure you climb. Get up as high as you can. Make your turns quick. Keep your energy up. And monitor the fighters. If you can get a little help from your teammates, that makes it even better. But use those guns as suppressing fire. Try to get a hit on them early when they're far away. And then you can alter their performance for later on. So that's one of the keys. Anyway, golly, I thought I was going to get to a lot more B-29 history. But that's not going to happen. There's too much. Do another video later. Guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Good luck. Have fun. See you in the next one.